what makes a product quality? Overall, it can be a bit of a loaded question because you'll get into the conversation of the materials used, how was the material made, where was the material made, is it comfortable, is it accessible. Quality, just like everything else in the world, lives in our subjective realm and is dependent on the knowledge and personal preferences of the observer. What may be a 7 to you may only be but a 3 to me. Some prefer Apple while others prefer Samsung or Windows. Your greatest athlete of all time can be Tom Brady, while for another, it can be Tiana Trump. Needless to say, to each his own. However, I do believe that one should be able to separate personal preferences from the acknowledgement of a quality product. Whether you like a product or not should be isolated from highlighting its quality or lack thereof. Greedy, entire name Greedy1896 SRL, is a family owned business currently run by Rugero. Guidi. I think I did that correctly. Even before the venture into footwear and fashion in 2004, the brand was superseded by the older Guidi company of leather tanning. The entire business was founded in Pescia, Tuscany, Italy. Picture small farms, rural environment, a very rustic feel by description, I've never been there. Fresh pasta trees growing on the hills, fresh vegetation, you know the vibes. Originally a tannery business named Guidi Rosalini Tannery, which over the years have supplied leather for brands such as Rick Owens, Prada, No Native, Carpe Dime, and Maison Magella. Throughout the years, Guidi has been established as a leather luxury fashion company. It has been the staple image of supreme quality and craftsmanship. In this nutshell video, I kinda wanna look at what aspects of Guidi I believe gives it the reputation of a luxury quality and premier quality. Guidi is mostly known for producing leather goods, primarily leather boots, low cut, ankle cut, mid cut, high cut, super high cut, etc, etc. Made from different leather hides, undergoing a strenuous, meticulous production process that gives it its worn, supple and soft appearance. Guidi's footwear would fall somewhere within the avant-garde aspect. I would say somewhat exclusive clientele that appreciate aesthetics that are a bit unconventional. Greedy boots are for those that appreciate the art of scuffing, bumping and rubbing your sneakers a bit. The person that emphasizes on the character building all the time. I wasn't doing anything. There was no noise taking place. As soon as I start recording, all of a sudden somebody wanna die. Guidi was able to accomplish something that many luxury brands have sought after in the past few years. That is a strong Asian, particularly Chinese market. With the Chinese market being one of the bigger emerging luxury fashion markets and overall luxury consumption markets for a while now, brands are developing marketing strategies to tap into this swollen, swollen, fat, lucrative market and secure a portion for themselves. Can't speak for Guidi's marketing team, but it seems as though they were able to do this seamlessly and organically by just being the brand that it is and creating pieces savory to the Chinese market, particularly their classic silhouettes 788Z, front zip PL2s, and the 310s, which is the taller version of the PL2s. This brings me to the components of Guidi that I believe carves out their idea of a staple high quality product. Even before the creation of Greedy, the footwear faction of the business, the venture was already on a path of supreme quality and craftsmanship. I believe in developing a product, the historical geography of the product plays a lot into the perception it has from consumers. When you hear certain places, your mind immediately focuses on the pride production that area is capable of. You think South Korea, Samsung. LG, North Korea, Germany, their engineering and of course, mm, you know, China for mainly being responsible for the spreading of something throughout the world, mass manufacturing, Trinidad and Tobago, the best carnival and cocoa in the world, Belgium, premium chocolate and France and Italians, quality fashion, <laughs> stop the video, right we back. France and Italy, quality fashion goods of course. My point is, even before the first shoe was stitched together, just the title of being produced in Italy would already direct consumers in a particular mindset, taking a closer look at the immediate surroundings and environment where Guidi was birthed 
Pessier, Tuscan Hills, known for its generational skilled artisans and leather manufacturing with the mother company, the leather tanning business established by Guido Guidi in 1896. This takes me right into the manufacturing component of Guidi. Apart from the unique horse leather used by Guidi, the production steps taken by the brand is another category that sets them apart. Starting with the object dyeing and vegetable tanning techniques. With sustainability of production and materials in mind, Guidi Company uses a vegetable based tanning process refined by the family company for decades. Object dyeing is a process whereby the upper and lower portions of the shoe are dyed all together at the same time, creating the same color, uniform, seamless look to the pieces. Their shoes are joined together using Goodyear Welt, a method which simply is joining the upper and lower parts of the shoe using an additional strap of material referred to as a welt. The boot undergoes a 40 minute dyeing process and then left to dry for about a week before packaging. These are just a few of the methods adopted by Greedy in the preparation of their footwear because in reality you'll never know all the secrets a brand uses in producing their content. Just like you'll never know the full manufacturing process of Dior or the right amount of crack Church's chicken sprinkles on top of their honey biscuits. A secondary core component added to the production process of Guidi is well the brand that actually produces it. In comes Paolo Ruggiati or Ruggiati. Ruggiati runs a shoemaking family business that runs in the family for generations with its only client currently Guidi. Well as of when the articles I read was published. From the heels of the shoe to the zippers are all made with quality materials and glued and stitched together. I tried finding more information about the shoemaking company but I couldn't find shit about that nigga on the internet. I, I don't know. If, if you all find anything, please let me know. Sales and marketing is a crucial, crucial, fundamental component to a successful business and the shaping of the perception of the consumers and potential customers. The quality of something could be as high as humanly possible. Greatest material and craftsmanship known to man, made with the finest dragon skin. But without proper marketing and sales tactic, <laughs> nothing. Gobarj, Miera, Nara, nothing. Nothing. With many creative individuals constantly consumed and overwhelmed with the creative process, the technical and business aspect can be a bit draining. In comes Alisa, Rigi, Amante, I, I don't know, <laughs> off of working for Carpe Dime, she was added to the early Guidi team working on sales and marketing aspect of the business while simultaneously influencing the initial aesthetic of the classic boots. She believed that the boots as is was a bit stiff and too proper given off the impression of church or a very formal attire. So she proposed the concept of distressing the boots in the tanning drums giving it an already worn ready to wear feel as well as dyeing the boots in the tanning drums. These two bits of alterations to the boots made massive improvements to the overall aesthetic. With her connections, she was able to get the boots into boutiques in Paris by 2007. 2010 Inc, a Hong Kong boutique was the first to carry Guidi boots in China, eventually shipping up to over 2,000 pairs of boots to China. This high demand contrasted with a medium to low supply obviously results in numerous replicas and copies. The final item on the checklist measuring success. Guidi holds certain principles dear to the brand. Guidi wishes for the brand to be acknowledged and praised by its clientele not because it's currently trending but because of the hundreds of years put into the construction of the boots they wear. Yes, it was started in 2003 or 4, I'm not sure. But the development of the leather company and the company that manufactures the shoe has been around since the 1800s. Decades of workers, decades of materials and vegetable tanning techniques, countless horses and decades of artisans poured into a pair of shoes, giving you the distressed soft leather you see today. What is the takeaway from Guidi? Well, I believe that the brand illustrates the importance of a team. The three main pillars of Guidi's team is Guidi Leather Company, Amante with sales and marketing and creative input, and the company that actually makes the shoe. Understanding your strong points and weak points in anything you do, then creating a team around those aspects that you need assistance with is a major takeaway for me. This does not have to be isolated to fashion alone, but bleeds into any project you may be taking on that feels a bit overwhelming. Another thing I picked 
picked up was understanding the selling points of the environment you are from, the resources you have near to your disposal, and what resources may be outsourced. We all don't have the opportunity of owning a 100-year-old company or having relationships with another 100-year-old company, breeding world-class artisans, but there may be a Rasta man in a community that has been making leather garments for 35 years of his life and knows leather better than anyone else. Use what is at your disposal and outsource materials if need be. It's always a good ego stroke to design, make, stitch, package, fly the plane to deliver every package at every door for yourself, for your business. But are you the best person for every one of those? Is someone in your immediate proximity visibly better than you at one of those things? Or at the very least willing to give more time towards bettering it than you? Is your own obsession with self-efficacy and narcissism in your own ability to do anything you set your mind to in a short period of time to the level of someone that was solely doing it for years, hindering the very same thing you're trying to grow? Are you thinking more about your own ego than trying to produce the best at whatever you're trying to do? Listen, I don't have the answers, but I believe that creating a team, and it's not easy, you're gonna have to do it alone at first, but creating a team eventually is the best way to increase quality and productivity. But be smart. Don't just give any and every nigga your design, then you'll see 200 pairs of it selling for $25 each at the mall. This has been another video by Nighttime made in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you for watching.